Within this video, we're gonna go ahead and create a fly through through this level. We're actually gonna be doing this in two separate sequences and then we're going to stitch them together into one master one. This is a really handy workflow if you're working with multiple people that are gonna be working on multiple shots. Each person can work on their own shot and then we can stitch them all together in the end for the final edit. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. For this first shot, what I wanna do is start down here inside of this building fly through here and then come way up here and then just basically kind of look at everything down below. So to begin this, let's go down into the content drawer. Now I already have a folder here for sequences. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click in here and I'm going to come up into my cinematics and go ahead and choose my level sequence. I'm going to go ahead and give this a new name. We'll just call this fly through one then go ahead and just double click on it to open it up. And from here, I'm going to actually navigate to where I want my camera to start because this is going to be the easiest way to add in one of the cameras that I want. And let's go ahead and just start right here. Next, we want to go ahead and create our camera. And we can actually do that by hitting this little button right here. And this is going to add a camera where our camera currently is. So I'll just click on that. And hey, we got a new camera. Now, this camera is not exactly set up the way I want. And one thing that I definitely want to mess with right here is the current focal length. Instead of 35, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 15, just so it matches a little bit closer inside of the viewport that we had a moment ago. Now that we have that set up, I can go ahead and start my keyframes. And by keyframes, I mean the actual animation of a camera from place to place as we fly through our level. So to begin this, I'm going to go ahead and click this button right here. This is an auto key. This will help me here about in a minute. But for right now, all I need to do is go ahead and set a keyframe at this specific point on my timeline. So I'm going to make sure my scrubber is at 000. And I'm going to go ahead and just scroll down to the bottom of this until I find my transform. And I'm going to click on this tiny little button right here. It's going to add in my first keyframe. So now I've got one right there. Next, I want to go ahead and move my camera to the final location. I find this a little bit easier, at least for my workflow. But first, I want to make sure that I am on the correct time. So at frame 120, and I am running at 30 frames a second, by the way. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this little red bar because I want this to be the very end of this clip. So now that I've got that set up, now I can go ahead and move my camera. And because this auto key is turned on, all I need to do is move my camera to where I want it. And as soon as I let go, you'll notice it'll create a key. So great, now I have a little key down here. Now as I scrub through this, you'll notice that I'm kind of like clipping through the world and I don't want that. In fact, I would love for this at about the one second mark for my camera to be right here. Now again, this is why I have that keyframe automatically working. So if I set it right here, as soon as I let go, it'll actually add in a keyframe, which is great. So now let's go ahead and move to, uh, let's say frame 75. I'm gonna go ahead and just move my camera right here. Great, now I have another keyframe. So now when I scrub through this, you'll see that my camera will actually fly through here and then it'll turn and move up like so. So great, we have our first shot. Now we're gonna go ahead and create our second shot. Now before I actually create my second shot, I wanna go ahead and eject from this camera by hitting my little eject button up here in the top left-hand corner. So I'll click on that. And now let's go ahead and get my camera down where I want it for my second shot, like so. So I'll have it fly through this one as well, and we'll go ahead and create another sequence. Now I'm gonna create this one just a little bit differently, and I'm gonna come up to this button right here, like so, and click on that, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose this add level sequence. Now the advantage of using this, what is this gonna do is it's actually going to create a new level sequence right here inside of my world, and you'll see it kind of pop up right here when I get done with this. So let's go ahead and just save this in the correct location. I'll go ahead and delete the one on that one and add it to, go ahead and hit save, and there it is. That's the little thing that I was talking about. Now, if this little thing is going to bother you, you can just move it down into the ground. It won't actually show up in game, so don't worry about that. So let's go ahead and create a camera just like we had done before. So again, I'll go ahead and just click on the camera button down here. And let's go ahead and change the focal length to 15 so it matches the other. Now, what I wanna go ahead and do is animate this camera much like I did the last one. So this is gonna be pretty similar. I'll just come down here to transform. Go ahead and just click on that little tiny button. So there's that one. Let's go ahead and move this up to frame 120. I'll go ahead and just animate the camera movements that I want so I know for sure it's gonna do basically the same kind of thing. Now, let's go ahead and go back in time. And let's say right about here, I'm gonna go ahead and set my camera up so it's at the front of this. And then at this time, right about here, I want this to be lined up so that it's looking out of the tunnel, about like so, so perfect. And then let's go ahead and make sure that we take this part of our clip and just cut it off at 120. So if we scrub through here, we see that we fly through and we look at our next section like so. So great, now we have our two 
cuts actually ready to go. So now we just need to go ahead and combine them in a master sequence for the last step. Now to create the master sequence, I'm actually gonna go back down into my content drawer. I'm just gonna right click and if I just type in the word sequence, I'll actually get this right away. I'll have to go down through one menu into another and we'll just double click on it to open it up. And inside of here, I need to go ahead and combine those first two shots. And this is actually really easy. All I need to do is to actually open up the content drawer. And if I just go ahead and move this down just a tiny bit, I can just drag this in here and let go. And it creates a shots track. So if I close that down, you can see this in here. And then I just need to drag that second one. I'll just drag it to the end here and I'll just boom like so. So now I have all of my shots track in here. I'm gonna hold control and use my mouse wheel to just kind of zoom out a little bit. What I need to do is to take this little red bar and I'm just gonna move it all the way to the end, like so. So now if I scrub through here, I'll be able to see my first track and then my second one. And to actually see the camera moving, I need to click on this little button right here, or in this case, cameras. So I'll just click on that. I will then possess this one. So now as I scrub through here, you see the first one. And then when I get to the end of it, it will cut and it'll move into the second one like so. But wait, there's more. There's actually something I want to show you that is really cool about this. If you look right here, you can see that we are actually in this master sequence. Now I named it master, so there's the name. And if I double click on either one of these, let's go ahead and just double click on the first one, it'll actually open up that first one and I can make all the edits that I need to inside of here. And you can see that I am actually down inside of one of the children of the master one, right? And then if I make any changes, it'll actually update in the master. And if I click on master, it actually goes back up here, and then I can go back into the second one if needed and make any changes inside of here, and it will update inside of the master. So there you have it. Now you know how to go ahead and create a sequencer for your game or movie. You also know how to add a camera, change a few features inside of that camera, go ahead and animate the camera from point to point using regular keyframes as well as the auto key. You also know how to go ahead and create a second sequence and then take both of those sequences and mash them together inside of a master sequence so that you can manipulate them individually if you're working with multiple team members. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or confusion you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go ahead and just leave a comment down below and I'll go ahead and get back to you when I can. And don't forget to be clever like and subscribe.